Hey guys, I'm Ben from Homebrew Worlds, and welcome to my very first episode of Terrain School, the series in which I'm going to show you in detailed step-by-step -step instructions how to make various pieces of terrain for a lot of the more popular games out there, such as Warhammer 40,000, Warhammer Fantasy, one of my personal favourites, which is Mordheim, and other games such as Age of Sigma, maybe even Bolt Action. How this is going to work is each month I'm going to put up a video and then you say in the questions and comments or even email me and tell me what you want to see a tutorial for next month. I'm going to start off with this month with a very basic Mordheim building. It's as stock standard as they come, it's going to be something really good for beginners and people that don't have a lot of terrain experience to kind of get their teeth into. So without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, let's have a look at some of the materials and tools you're gonna to need to complete this project. First of all, you're gonna need a really good steel ruler. Um, these come in many different lengths. It usually doesn't matter what length you get it in. Um, this one's an 18 inch ruler. I like it because it's got both inches and centimeters on it. Um, I've only just recently moved to the United States and I'm still trying to get, a, get my head around the old inches. Um, so this is really good for me. You're also going to need some cutting implements. I've got myself an X-Acto blade and I also have a huge amount of blades for this. Um, I think I bought a hundred on Amazon a while back and I mean I go through them like nothing else. You're going to need a really good box cutter with an extend extendable blade. Um, this is also really good because you can just snap the blades off as you go and it's really nice because you can extend it all the way out and carve with it too. A pen or a pencil. You need a, a square of some kind. Um, I tend to prefer these ones. Machinist squares are also something to look for. Um, they're really good because it's just a, a metal 90 degree angle. Um, you're going to need a hot glue gun, some white glue or PVA glue. You're going to need some various different types of sand or grit. We'll get to that later on. Good old drum of plaster of Paris. And some of my um, parts over here for detailing, I'm going to go through these in a little bit more detail later on when I use them. But to go through them now, I've got just a sheet of plastic card with some texture on it. I've got some uh, balsa wood strips and a sheet of balsa wood. I also have with me is a trusty miniature in, uh, this is actually just a Mordeheim Zealot. Because I'm making a Mordeheim piece of terrain, I thought it would be quite appropriate and this is really good to have on hand just to check scale make sure you're not messing anything up so without further ado let's get started all right guys so to get started um, we are going to start off with two sheets of foam board we've got some of our tools that we went over earlier here and the basic structure of this building is going to be built out of foam board uh, in some places it's called, it's called uh, foam core. Um, I buy mine from my local Michaels. Uh, you can get it at a Hobby Lobby, pretty much any art or craft store, um, even a lot of office supply stores carry this product as well. And I really like making terrain out of foam board because it's durable, it's really easy to cut, and it's cheap. You know, one of the things I want to try and do with these tutorials is make sure that the, the products that I'm using are cost effective and they're not going to break your bank. So as you can see we've got two pieces. What I've done is I've gone ahead and cut out the base for the building out of foam board. I just cut uh, irregular circular shapes um, and then I actually went around with my box cutter and I just shaved off the edge. Now you need a really sharp blade to do this because the foam on the inside will tear if your blade is blunt. Now by cutting around the edge here we we make a nice um, gradiated curve and that'll look really nice when we go to put the sand on later on. So to get started we are going to make a very basic two-story building. Uh, it's as basic, basic as they come and what I've done is I've gone ahead and marked out 2.5 inch intervals and then a 1.5 inch extra part on top. And this is actually going to be our stories. And what I've got here is just a, a basic Mordeheim miniature that I like to, I like to keep models on hand. Um, bit of a scale reference. It also is kind of makes it a bit easier for us to uh, figure out where things are going to go. 
So to get started, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do some basic planning. I really don't like to pre-plan these too much. Um, I find it's, it's more fun for me to kind of just see where things go and uh, I really enjoy the spontaneity of it. Bit of bit more of an organic design process. So here I'm just going to mark out the uh, basic footprint of the building. Now this is just me going through, figuring out how big I want it. You know the rough dimensions of the of the footprint. Um, and this is more or less you know, all the pre-planning I'm going to do, that and, and doing some rough measurements. I, I never do sketches, I never do anything like that. That's just my own personal preference. A lot of people when they make terrain, they like to plan every detail out, sketch it all out, you know, make 3D models of it and stuff. And that's, that's great. If you want to do that, you go right ahead. Um, but this is just the way I work and it works for me. So, by figuring out the footprint, I can kind of get an idea of how wide I want the front face of the building. Now the front face is going to be honestly the most the most important part of the building. It's going to probably have the most detail, the most windows, your door's going to go there and uh, so you want to pay a bit of attention to how you present that to the rest of the uh, the rest of the building and how it kind of matches up with the base and um, the rest of the, uh, the structure we're going to put on there. So I'm just going to get my square make sure things are nice and neat. I might just go ahead and take off a little bit of the edge there. And this is just going to make sure that it's nice and square. And it's going to make it a lot easier for us to match up the sides of the building. So as you can see, we've got our front base right there okay great so I'm gonna go ahead and do the sides and we'll come back when all the pieces are cut out all right guys so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've cut out all the different parts for the building and as you can see here we have our parts all laid out here we've got the front the side the top roof section which I've cut as a triangle and I have the two floor sections the base and what I've got here is I've got some uh, some windows and doors now these were cast by myself from the old uh, Mortarheim terrain kit now you can't buy those windows and doors anymore I managed to score a few off eBay and I made a, a silicone mold of them but you don't really need these the building would look just as good without them However, I like adding little details such as these to my terrain. It can really sort of add that extra, I guess, uh, extra effect or kind of extra bit of flair that can kind of set them apart from others. Um. <clears throat> all right, guys, so what we've got here is we've got all of our parts laid out. We've got the base, the front, the side, I've gone ahead and cut out the uh, the top roof section. Uh, I've just get, done a basic triangle. I've got my two floors, and here I've got an assortment of windows and doors. Now these are really easy. These are just old Games Workshop Mortarheim terrain pieces that I've just made a really simple silicone mold of. However, you can substitute these for um, details that you can buy from your model train store, or you can just leave them out altogether. They're not mandatory. I just like to add that little bit of extra detail. So, our next step is going to be to place these windows and doors onto our building faces and figure out where we want to go with that. So, we're going to start off with the door. We're just going to place this down here. Now again, I'm just doing this all by eye. I really don't pre-plan any of this stuff. And I'm just going to draw around just like this. Very simple. I'm also going to quickly go in and just rule out the lines to separate the different floors 
Now I've done my side uh, wall a little bit shorter, but that's okay. You'll, you'll figure that out when we come to our next step after this. Now the next thing I want to do is I just want to place, start placing these windows on. I think I'm going to do three windows for each level, except for this top level, which is going to kind of be like the attic. I'm just going to do one, and then one there. And again, you just get your mini, have a bit of a look. Yep, looks pretty good to me. Now, I usually like to go about half an inch to just a little over half an inch off of the floor for my windows. As you can see, if I lay this guy, imagine if he was standing there, you want the window to kind of intersect with his uh, hips or waist and end sort of at the top of his head. Now these are pretty small windows, um, you know, it's more just for line of sight purposes and things like that. You want to kind of make sure that they're sitting in the appropriate place. All right, well, ditch these guys. Just going to get my square, make sure it's level. And I'm just going to rule a line across here, which is going to be the line that the windows are going to sit on. And this is going to help me when it comes to my next step, which is cutting out the shapes for these windows to sit in. All right. So what you'll have is something that looks like that. Now your next step is you just want to place the window there and you just want to do exactly like we did with the door. You just want to draw around it. Very easy. Now again, I like to do these fairly symmetrical but I like to always do it by hand. Now there's a bit of a method in my madness here. Really, the real reason why I'm doing these by hand is because I'm lazy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the real reason is that for these fantasy style buildings, I find if you measure, pre-measure everything out, it all looks a little too um, architectural and it loses that kind of filthy ramshackle fantasy look that I think really works well for games that are set in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. I mean I'm making this building specifically for Mordheim, so I'm using a lot of references that kind of lead itself to that ruin Mordheim look. So now you've got something that looks like this and you're gonna kind of think well you know it doesn't really look very good. The next step, instead of just gluing these windows and doors onto the flat thing, we want to cut a hole behind it so we can figure out line of sight and the minis can kind of see each other and that kind of thing. It seems a bit silly, but it, it honestly makes gaming a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to cut out each of these sections with our trusty scalpel or an X-Acto blade. Now again, you want a really, really sharp blade for this. If you don't, it's going to make things a lot harder, especially when you're trying to cut out really small areas like this. It's going to be impossible. Don't even try it with something like that. You're just not going to have a good time. The other thing is, the way these windows are designed is they're designed to sit on the outside of the foam board. You don't want to recess them in, as I just, I don't think they look very good. So we want to cut, when we cut, we want to cut a little bit on the inside edge of this line. I mean, I could have gone through, I could have measured them, I could have figured it all out again. This is just me being quick, efficient. You know, you don't put a lot of pre-planning into this, you just bang, 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 go, go, go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cut out all these shapes, and we'll come back when that's done. All right, guys, so gone ahead and cut out all the windows and doors and your piece should look something like this. Our next step is going to be to glue these parts to our base. Now what I've got here, I've just got a basic hot glue gun. Grab my other parts and put them there. And we're just going to go ahead and run a bit of hot glue on the bottom just like that and we're just going to 
don't worry if it's not exactly straight. The great thing about hot glue and foam board is that it always has a little bit of give. So you can always just, you know, bend it into place a little bit more. Now I'm just going to run a bead of glue. Don't need a lot of this glue. And I'm just going to glue this part here to the side. Now, if you've got a bit of glue running over, it should be cool enough by this point to just run your finger along. It's not going to burn you, it's fine, I do this all the time. Alright, so now you're pretty much present, presented with a really weird looking square blocky building. Now, in terms of the windows, we'll go ahead and glue those on in a, in a few minutes, but I'm just going to go ahead and glue on the top section. I like to do this part separately. Um, most times I like just to have some choice when it comes to the way I do these buildings because the front face is usually always a square or a rectangle. And then I, I often don't know what I want to do with the roof. Sometimes I won't have a roof. Sometimes I'll have a partial roof. I just like having it as a separate section because it allows me to play with the pitch and the scale. You know, sometimes you're going to have really high pitched roofs, you know, to get that sort of crazy fantasy look. Sometimes you want to have them really shallow. You know, it could be for, for various other reasons. And I'm also just going to go in and I'm just going to glue the, uh, the floors in there. Blue. And again, this is really simple. All I'm doing is just running a bead of glue along. And I'm just going to fix him in there like that. And I'm just going to use my eye to just figure out what. The other great thing is you can always just get your mini, make sure he's right height. You'll have a few minutes till the glue, well, probably a bit less than a few minutes till the glue dries. And then I'm going to put the second floor. It's not really the second floor. I'm thinking this more as like an attic piece. Now, although mine looks like it's not really matching together properly, don't worry because in a minute we are going to ruin the heck out of this. All right. So now our building structure is finished. This is what I like to call part one. From now on, it's mostly detailing, um, ruining the building, you know, gluing on the doors and, and windows and things like that. So what we're going to do, is final step of our basic construction is we're going to ruin the building. Now this is probably my favorite part because this is the most organic and random part of the entire process. Usually when you're making a ruined building, you make it flat, you cut out all the ruined sections and you glue it together. But the way I like to do it is very simple. And you can only really do this if you're making it out of a material like foam board, is you get a basic box cutter, you extend the knife a little bit, and you cut downwards into the material, you turn the knife and pop out a section. And this works really well when you wanna get that kind of ruined brick effect. Just gonna go through. Something to note about safety is you don't want to extend the knife all the way out because you're going to snap the knife off. These have got score marks in them and you snap them to make them sharper. So just a few clicks out and as you can see you're getting this really cool ruined brick effect and that looks awesome where it's painted. And we're just going to go ahead, keep going, cut through the floors and you can also go in from the side here and pop them out. Just You won't need that much force. You just Go in and do it. You know, we can even cut down into this window section. And I generally like to do this before I put the windows on because, you know, sometimes you, you ruin a building so much you don't even need a window frame or, or, or things like that. It kind of just... Get this. As you can see, it's looking pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to do this section. One thing when you're doing ru ruined buildings is you don't ever want 
perfectly straight sections like this. You don't ever want that. That's doesn't look good. I'm gonna go all the way down. And see this for me is this is getting a little bit too symmetrical. So I want to go through and when buildings fall down, they don't fall in a pattern. They always just, it's always random. As you can see, we've got a nice little part there. And we've just extended that up and almost to this floor section. These, I won't worry about doing these because we're gonna lay the, the balsa wood flooring over the top of that and you're not really gonna see it. These parts here, we're gonna keep these because we're gonna use these parts at a later date when we come in to do the rubble around the building. Um, sometimes I like to use these ruined uh, offcuts. Sometimes I like to use, you know, pieces of foam. Um, chopped up sprues is something that people have been using for years. You know, you can use anything, but for the sake of simplicity for you guys, we're just gonna use the, the ruined parts. So that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, might just, there we go. Next part is going to be gluing the windows and doors on. Now, I like to use my hot glue gun for this. We're just gonna go through exactly the same. It's pretty self-explanatory. You put a little bit of glue on your details and then you put them on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come back when that's finished. All right, guys. So we've glued all the windows and doors on and the building is ready for detailing. I'll set this over here for a minute. Um, here you can see I've gone and got a series of parts and I'll just go through and explain what some of these are. So what I've got here is just basic balsa wood. Now you can buy this at almost any model store. If your model store does not stock this stuff, they are doing it wrong. And I've gone ahead and gotten a few strips in various sizes. Now these are pretty cheap. These are like sometimes 20 to 50 cents. And I've, you know, I've snapped these up, but they usually come in much, much longer sections. And I've gone ahead and got some, um, some squares, some sort of long thin sections of different sizes. And I really, really like working with these because I find it's really easy to just glue them onto a building, add all the details. And same as in the inside, I've just bought a sheet of balsa wood. I believe this is all made by, by Midwest products. I think it's an American company. It's usually the product that I see around the most. And this is again, really easy. You just glue it down and snap it off. And it's the perfect product to use for this kind of thing because all you need to do later on is just paint it and dry brush it and it looks fantastic. Here we have a sheet of plastic which has a tile texture in it. This is a Plastruct product and it's, I believe it's their shingles, their roof shingles. I don't normally use this, but I've just started using it lately because it's a huge time saver for me. Normally when you do roof shingles and stuff, you'll, you'll do the old cereal box packaging method where you'll chop out a whole bunch of little squares and you'll put a flat piece here and you'll glue each piece on and that can look great. But lately I've kind of just wanted to, to go that little bit of an extra mile. Now this plastic is expensive. It's about $12 for two sheets, but it tends to last you a while if you use it sparingly. And I find that because it's so detailed, you really don't need much of it. So I'm gonna set this over here and we're gonna go ahead and do the balsa wood sections. So to start off with, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay our building down and this is very simple. You know, all we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some struts in and if you think about how this building is constructed, it would have been a series of, of wooden frame uh, that they put up and then they would have put the brickwork in amongst it. I'm no expert on this kind of stuff. This is just in my head what would happen. And all I'm gonna do, again, this is just my way of doing it. It also saves me on a bit of cutting time. I'm just gonna place the strut where I want it and I'm just gonna snap the end off. And this is gonna make a really nice ruined effect along here where the, almost like it looks like this side of the building's been blasted away and the wood has splintered and you get this really cool effect. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna glue it down run some hot glue along here and I'm just going to glue that down there like that. And this is another reason why I like to draw in my floors. 
because it sort of helps me later on when I do that. So just make sure it's relatively straight. Again, you don't actually have to do them straight. I've seen some great buildings before where they've done really curved, kind of almost like hand carved uh, wooden struts and that can look excellent. But for the purposes of this to keep it simple, we're just gonna do some basic straight ones. Now I'm gonna use this thinner strip, but sometimes I like to go for a bit of a thicker effect on some of the floors. Yeah, you know, I might actually do that. I think that looks kind of good. Sometimes this stuff can be a little tricky to cut with a box cutter. It might be good to get a hobby saw or even a little jeweler's saw it can be a good idea. Again, I'm just gonna put this here. Sometimes you can just mark it with your finger and you just snap that, there you go. As you can see, it looks great. And I'm just gonna glue that down. Sometimes when I'm doing commissions, I'll actually use basswood instead of balsa wood. Um, because balsa wood, the only downside to balsa wood is it's a very, very flimsy material. You, know, you certainly don't want parts hanging out that's balsa wood because when you're playing a game, you know, you're placing your miniatures in it constantly, you know, and you'll, you'll snap bits off. It's just part of, part of how it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the balsa wood detailing on here using the exact same methods. The only difference that I might do is for some of these thinner strips, I'm gonna run these between the windows. I think that looks really nice, and it's something that I do a lot of. I'll usually not run them around the door if I've done a, a, a pre-molded door section, because I find it doesn't need it, but I'll also run a section up along the edge of the building where I joined these two parts together, because you don't wanna see this ugly foam. I'll probably use a thinner strip just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come back when it's finished. All right guys, so here is our finished product. As you can see, I've gone ahead and added my different strips of balsa wood all along the structure of the building. I haven't run any along the edge here because it's usually not something that I bother doing, but for the most part, I think it looks pretty good, don't you think? I've got a couple of leftover little pieces. I'm gonna keep these in my rubble pile because I like to use these later on when we put the rubble in i'll snap them up so we'll just keep those for later so the next step of the wood detailing is you're going to get your your sheets of balsa wood and we're going to add those onto the floors i'm not going to bother about the ground floor because usually that's too ruined too covered in sand sometimes i'll add a few just poking through here and there but that's usually not something that i worry about okay as you can see, I've used this piece before. Just gonna quickly make a straight cut. Now the great thing about this is if you buy it thick enough that you can add some, some detail in, but thin enough that you can just cut and score it, it makes your life a lot easier. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of do a bit of a dry fit here. And then this is where it's really simple. I'm just gonna add some glue to the base of the floor with my hot glue gun. I'm gonna glue this sheet down. This might look a bit silly for now, but I'm gonna figure it out in a second. I'm gonna wait a minute for it to dry. We'll sort of just tack, and then we're gonna, just gonna snap it like this. And the balsa wood is so thin that it's gonna snap along the line of the, um, the foam board that we've put down, just gonna cut a straight edge. The only downside to this is you sort of do waste a little bit of balsa wood by having to always cut off the sections. Again, uh, you can sometimes get away with not even adding the glue just yet. As you can see, then we can go back in and glue that in. Whoops. Like I said, it's pretty thin, but that's okay. We'll just work with that. I think it looks pretty cool. All right, this one we're definitely gonna have to glue down. So we'll just put some glue down. I don't really worry about being too neat or pre-plan this too much. 
make sure it's really adhered to the glue. Sometimes you can really just... Oh, see? Some of the glue's not dry. That's okay. <clears throat> now, you probably want to have the wood grain... One thing you definitely want to watch at, actually is when you're, you're doing this is that the wood grain always flows in a particular pattern. This is just nothing more than wood. It might be really soft and easy to use, but it's still wood. And you want all the grains to be going in the same direction. You never want to kind of put them on like that. It doesn't look very good and it's not particularly realistic. So I'll just glue this last piece in here. Now I often like some of the floor to be showing through. I know I said earlier on that it wouldn't, but you know, it was a bit of a bit of a miss um, uh, a misstep on my behalf. It often does show through, but the wood um, and the foam board is going to kind of get ruined in a minute when I show you how to how to do that section. All right, so that is done. And with this step, you're pretty much almost done with the detailing side of things. I'll just move these over here. The next thing you want to do is you want to just get a plain pen. Pencil will also work. And what we're going to do is we're just going to draw the lines, the floorboards. You don't have to be particularly neat about this. You know, this is an old fantasy building. They would have hand cut a lot of this wood. And this balsa wood is really, really easy to score. This is one thing that I love about this material. And I'm just going to go through and do the base. The, uh, the first floor, again, it should, if you're following the grain, be easy enough to do. Whoops. I'll glue that back on in a minute. Uh, see, we're ripping bits off here and there. I didn't put enough glue on. Get that guy back in there. All right. Should be good enough to do. All righty. Done. Easy as that. And, you know, this is just going to paint up really nicely. All you, all you need to do sometimes is just spray it brown and give it a bit of a dry brush with some other brown colours. So, the all-important roof is going to be our next step. And, again, this is quite simple. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my sheet of plastruct roof shingles. And all I'm going to do is just sort of match it up by eye and figure out how I want to do it. Now this roof would be destroyed so you never ever want to kind of have just like square blocky bits and uh, I've already seen this is kind of already being chopped up. I think I probably want to just follow this line here kind of up and around and you can follow the, the imprint of this pretty well and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut this out and we'll come back when it's done. All right, so I've gone ahead and cut out our little roof tile section, pretty easy. All I did was just kind of follow the already existing pattern, figure out where I'd like it to be smashed and broken. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna glue him onto the top edge of our building. That's another reason why I really like these plastic sheets is it kind of just speeds up my, my construction process a bit and uh, gets me onto my favorite part, which is painting these buildings. I also cut off a little extra part and we'll just put that down there. Again, I'm just using hot glue for this, you know. I don't really have the time to wait for, for wood glue or white glue to, to fix. Um, and our next last little step is I'm just gonna take some more of these wooden strips and I like to add a few little structure points here and this is just a matter of it also kind of helps to strengthen the roof a bit which this plastic is not particularly thick so sometimes it needs a little bit of support it also makes it 
look a little detailed, which I really like. It's going to glue these in here. It's usually no more than two or three that you need. You can sometimes add them going um, uh, this way as well. It's really just your own personal preference. Um, again, I'm trying to keep this building as simple as possible for you guys so you can build it along with me. All right, so I've just have I've just got this part peeking out from the bottom of that ruined section, and I think I'm gonna actually add one more, just one more for luck. All right. Put that in there, just on the edge of that little broken part there. So again, you know. I'm showing you the basic processes that I use and you can really just take these and take these materials and and kind of just put your own spin on things or, or even take it a step further you know like I said you could you could have a much larger roof you could have a much larger building your floors you could have them fallen in here you could add tons of strip detailing it's really whatever you want to do how much time you want to put into it also how much money as well because these materials do cost a bit of money um, like I said before I'm not using very expensive materials but you know it, it adds up once we're doing a you know four by four board size of them so this building is detailed and it's more or less done the last point we need to go over is just the rubble so what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and collect our sand our plaster and our rubble parts and we'll come back and start that process. All right, guys, so we're back and we've got all of our materials we need to do the rubble. So I'll set these two over here for the minute and we'll talk about this most important part. This is just basic plaster of Paris. As you can see here, I've got my product that I like to use, it's just DAP, DAP brand. And you can buy this from Home Depot, Lowe's, Hobby Lobby, all sorts of places sell this. You can even get it on Amazon. And if you can go to somewhere like Michael's where they've got a 40% off coupon, you can actually get it for pretty cheap. Now, Plaster of Paris sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap because it's often used on terrain in areas where it can chip very easily. Now, I don't recommend using this all the time. I use it because it's very easy for me to obtain and it's very cheap. It also does the job that I want it to do. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be mixing our plaster up and we're gonna be adding some various levels of sand and grit to make a very thick paste. We're gonna put the paste around the base of our building to kind of create a bit more of a three-dimensional vibe here because one thing I really dislike is when it's flat and you've just got stones and blocks just glued onto there. It doesn't, really doesn't look very good. So we're just gonna go ahead and mix up our part plaster bit by bit. Now you really just don't want to add too much water at the start. As you can see, I've made a very, very thick, almost like when you're making a dough. Now you want to be very careful because it also dries quite quickly, which is another reason why I like to use this method. Um, it for me, when I'm doing commissions, it's really important that I watch my time and I try and have these jobs done as soon as possible. Now, I know that might sound strange because, you know, of course I want them to be done right, but time is money for me and I need to get these commissions finished and moved on to the next one. So, another product that you can use um, if you want it to be a little bit stronger is dental plaster. I'm actually just gonna add a little bit more water this all right see that's good so you want it to be kind of the consistency of heavy whipping cream that kind of thing one thing I've learned while I'm in the US I'm originally from Australia is people love their heavy whipping cream here so I'm just going to go ahead and add some of these little stones I've got a big piece of dried plaster in there you don't want that and I'm just going to mix this in these stones I bought from Walmart only a couple of dollars kitty litter 
is also a very, very good product. I don't use it because I don't have cats. I don't really have much use for it. Okay, I'm also just going to add a little bit of sand. Sometimes I skip the sand. Um, but you just want this really thick paste-like consistency. It's a leaf in there or something. I don't know what that was. As you can see. And what we're going to do is we'll set these over here, especially this water, because we don't want to knock this over, is we're just going to get this and we're just going to start spooning that on. And as you can see, it's going to kind of create this lumpy, ruined pile look. cutting mat. Um, great thing about plaster too is it's it's very safe to use you know it doesn't create chemicals or you know it's just essentially a pretty basic product and uh, you know it's one that I use a lot for a lot of different things you know you can cast um, big squares of this and smash it up with a hammer you know it's great and the great thing also is that it, it takes paint really nicely too. Um, again though, you want to be very careful when you're using it. If you want something to be ultra durable, you really don't want to use plaster for anything other than what I'm using it for now. Um, house filler, you know, spackle, those kind of things is probably more common than what I'm doing now. But you know, I've got to be honest, sometimes those products can really break the bank you know if you've got to go down and spend six dollars on a tiny little thing of filler every single time you want to you want to do a building because we're putting this on pretty thick you know all right guys sorry about that that last part got cut off because the camera ran out of space so you put your plaster on it's got the pebbles and the sand mixed into it it's nice and dry as you can see it's nice and strong the, the foam board hasn't warped so we're all in the clear the next step, and this is the most simple part of the entire process, we are going to glue our sand and our grit. Pebbles, I like to call it grit because it's just whatever, you know, I get little pebbles, it's the same as what we mixed into our plaster, and we're going to glue those down with basic white glue. Now, back home in Australia we call this PVA glue, here people seem to call it white glue, I don't really know the difference, um, I just buy basic Elmer's. Um, does the job and we're just going to get our brush and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a really thick coat of this white glue all over the base of the building. Now we want to just get our brush we want to make sure this is all in the cracks and the other thing is this is also going to make sure this base is nice and strong because the glue is going to give it a really nice tacky coat with the sand and it's going to make sure that nothing can get knocked off while you're gaming. So make sure we get in, go all over this plaster. Now one thing you want to be careful of is because the plaster, I don't quite know why it does this, but I've noticed that it seems to suck up the glue quite quickly it could just be sort of um, how it likes to absorb moisture and whatnot but um, you want to not leave the glue too long before you start gluing your sand and your grit down um, that's just a little tip that I found because sometimes it'll suck up all the glue and the sand won't really adhere properly to the plaster and you want to just make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so first I'm going to put down the pebbles. Now I know you think, well, why don't you put the sand down first and then the pebbles? Well, there's a bit of a reason for that. So I'm just going to shake these all over. Again, this is really, you just have a think about how much rubble you want to put on this. Um, you can put a little bit, you can put a lot. I tend to prefer more rather than um, than less because I just kind of like that smashed look. 
Some people don't like to do uh, lots of rubble because their minis will tip over, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, I like it to be a bit more immersive than that. Now we're just going to let this sit for a, just a 10, 10 seconds or so. Let the glue tack onto the, um, the pebbles. The reason why I put the pebbles down first is that when we put the, uh, the sand over next, the glue is quite thick and the sand is going to kind of uh, look like, it, well basically it's going to make the pebbles look like they're sitting in the sand rather than on top of the sand. And this is a little thing that you want to kind of pay attention to because the way rubble tends to work is the large stuff tends to sink into the, the smaller, finer dust in the sand. Now we're just going to make sure this gets coated nicely coated and we'll just let that sit for a little bit give it a bit of a shake and then we're going to tip off our excess now one thing i also like to do is just have something to catch all of the excess on the base i mean i'm using my cutting mat which of course i'm going to wash off after this but a piece of paper will do fine or even an old newspaper if you've got any on on hand and and as you can see, you know, this is a really nice basic effect. We've got a lot of rubble sitting around this ruined building. And what we want to do next is we want to get our pieces, our rubble details. And this is, if you remember earlier on when we cut these out from the walls, we want to just kind of tack on a little bit more glue. Again, you don't have to be particularly careful about this. You just want to kind of put some around and we want to place some of these parts in here. Rip this piece of balsa wood. I think we'll, actually I think we'll save this guy and we'll put him up on the one of the floors there maybe. But these parts, you know, we're just going to glue these down here like this. And again, you know, just as much or as little as you want Sometimes I've done buildings that have huge chunks of rubble, you know, if it's a ruined temple or something, you know, you're really going to want to go nuts with that. Again, though, this is really just up to you. It's whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to put a little bit more sand over this just to cover the, the glue. And with that, we are finished. So, to give this little process a sum up, you want to put the glue down over the plaster, you want to put the pebbles on first, then the sand, then the detail. Something you can also do is you can push the details into the plaster when it's still wet. But, you know, um, for, this, for this example, I've just kind of taken a bit of more of a simple route. The next thing I want to just quickly do is I just want to add a little bit of glue just along the edges of these, you know, just kind of maybe a little bit random here. And you just want to kind of put a few of these pebbles on. Exact same process, although we don't have any plaster underneath. Give it a bit of a shake. We'll tip it off. This time I'm just going to go in with my brush and I'm just going to kind of... And this, because this PVA has gone on quite thick, you know, it's going to make this really nice little piles of rubble look that we want to go for. And it kind of also helps to break up all of the uh, the um, the wood that we've got. So with that, guys, this building is completely finished and it is ready for paint. All right, guys, here we are at the end of our very first episode of Terrain School. We've got our finished product here. I think it looks pretty awesome. Um, it's ready for paint and we're gonna cover that in the next episode where I'm gonna show you how I paint and finish these motorhome buildings. Um, thanks guys for watching and as always you can find me at facebook.com slash homebrewedworlds or you can email me at homebrewedworlds at gmail.com. Thanks again guys.